Hi everyone, welcome back to Grandpa Mark's Hobby and a finale of Revell's 32 Ford Roadster. Then I had a blast with this build. As you can see, so did the crew. Uh, Chandler and Zach are already hitting the pizza. We got Wayne finishing things up. Uh, Zach finishing up on the tires. Lori and, and uh, Jake checking things out. Duke trying to get a picture of, T of uh, Daisy in there. And Lee and Tim just happy this one's on, on the uh, finish block. Let's get Daisy and Tim out the way. Let's move the guitar. The guitar came out really good. I'm happy with it. We'll move it over and put it in its stand. And let's talk about the build. We're calling this one Lucky. Uh, because of green, I wanted to have this done for St. Patrick's Day, but that did not happen. Um, <laughs> just things, things got in the way. So... This is a mix of Tamiya's dark green, or Tamiya's green, and chrome silver. And just, a, I think it's a 50-50 mix, to be honest with you. Airbrushed with Gallery's 0.3 millimeter Mobius airbrush. Laid that down smooth as glass. <laughs> I had some fun doing decal work. I had a blast doing the interior. I even made a Hot Rod magazine of the, uh, we were calling it Shamrock Shake back then. <laughs> so let's dig in here. First thing I want to show you is we even got the inside of the, uh, the hood decaled up with Lucky on it. The engine, man, am I happy with the, how the engine came out. <laughs> we got the linkage in here. We got spark plug wires that are green to match everything else. We got the dipstick. Um, we're just loaded to the gills here with little details. The fuel line coming up the top. Everything just laid in here so nice and fit so well. I had zero fitment issues with this whatsoever. Um, I did add these two supports. They weren't part of the kit but the holes were drilled on all four sides. So I just took a little piece of craft wire, cut it a little bit long to where when you put it in this way, it'll go in, drop down, pull it forward, glue it in place, walk away proud, let it sit. And then I painted that with the chrome silver. I uh, got the moon tank on the front. I chromed the cap, left everything on the moon tank the, uh, I painted them with chrome silver, but that with the uh, uh, Tamiya's panel liner brought that back into that aluminum look that I was really going for. Same with the blower. Man, that blower is just sharp as a tack. I love it. I didn't weather my uh, air cleaners on this. This is going to the show, so he's got brand new air cleaners in there. The fuel pump is painted up nice. The radiator hoses were chrome. I left the chrome on the tops. I know that's supposed to be that corrugated steel, but instead I put I painted it rubber black. I think it looks a lot better than that chrome just blasting out at you. Again, you can see we got this baby lit. No problem. I didn't light the back because I didn't have really any good um, taillights that, I, that would fit in right here. I could have run them out out here but I didn't want the wires out there so I just opted to use the decal the decal the uh, stock tail lights and then just painted them with the Tamiya's clear red worked out real well um, consensus said to leave this the uh, fuel tank green and I did and I'm happy I did because aluminum would have just looked dumb there especially with the chrome rod across the back. This kit I got because of the fenders. I like the chop fenders in the back and I love these motorcycle fenders. Way back in the day, I saw a car that had those and I thought it was just so stinking cool. I didn't know back then they were motorcycle fenders. I just thought they were just chopped and really looked nice. So we put the ankle burners on the side both sides 
And remember, I narrowed that down on the insides so that it uh, looks nice and thin. And as you can see, now that it's all painted up and everything and weathered out, that looks really good there. Same with the back pipes. I hollowed them out. I painted those with Molotow pen and, uh, and then dirtied up the insides a little bit. License plate, you can see, is Lucky. That's what we're calling it, the Shamrock Shake, Lucky. Um, I got the Angry Leprechaun on the back. I did this on purpose with a clear decal and I, because I, I wanted the green face. I just, I think that's just so cool. <laughs> I'd love that. And then we threw the Shamrocks on the side to boot this kit or this car looks just as good with the with the hood on as it does with the hood off. Uh, not a whole lot of them that I really thought, man, that looks great both ways. This one does. I don't know if it's the blower or the, uh, the way the ankle burners come out, stick way out there and they're not that shiny chrome. I'm not sure if it's just that or the green or whatever or the, the fenders, but it just, it, it goes both ways. I, I really like it. I opted to not do the wood steering wheel. I, when I painted that the gloss black with the green and everything and the, the, uh, the dashboard, I thought, well, that's the way we're going to leave that just like that. So I did, and I'm happy I did. I got a real good picture of this dashboard finally. So I'll post that in with the pictures at the end. But this kit fell together. Even the lights on this one went together real nice. Um, the underside looks great. Well, we lost the... Uh, we lost the hood. Like I said, lucky on the hood. I was having fun. Um... The underside looks really good. I like the way this transmission, and you can really see your spark or your starter and uh, oil pan. The alternator sits way down low. I had to make a bracket for that. The wires for the um, lights, I ran down both sides, just like I was saying, and I got a video going for that right now. So. I did a pretty decent how to one, run the wires, how to solder them and everything. So if you're looking, check it out. It'll be coming up pretty, pretty soon. Just ran them and dropped those wires down in the sides here. Ran them into the switch inside. Good to go. I left the, uh, the straps on here. The, the tape, I left it silver just because I kind of liked it. There was a whole lot of black going on. And I opted to paint the black because I had it all green at one time and it really, it was too much. And now when I'm shaking this back and forth, you can see that that's a little bit shiny. It's not shining through green. It's just the way the light's hitting it. So that is what it is. I Molotow pen a little bump on the bottom there, panel lined a whole bunch of stuff, but this kit really, really went together well. I walked away from, I even got the drive shaft to turn. <laughs> I walked away from this kit while I was doing the snap together truck and came back and it was like, like I never left. It was easy to get back into, but the engine came out really good. A lot of nice detail in that engine. A lot of nice detail in everything in this kit. The uh, stick shift with the plate, the steering wheel, I drilled out all the holes. The only faux pas I had with this whole kit is when I cut the door handle off on this side, it was like mismolded and it was it was in two pieces. So I just wasn't even trying. I, I tried a couple of times to get it to where I could glue it together. It wasn't happening. So I just kind of put it in the where the hole is and called it good. This side sticking out the way it should, and I thought about cutting that off and making it even, but I decided, nope, I'm going to just leave it the way it is. The window went together so dang nice, and what I did with the window is 
I started out, I was holding the window into the frame on both sides here with some of my real light gripping uh, clothespins. And what I did is I right around here in four spots, I put some clear, um, the shiny Mod Podge, and then I grabbed it with those clothespins and that held the glass in tight and it let that Mod Podge do its job and it held on once it was dry, I came back with quick shine on the back side of it and with a put got a little bit of quick shine on one of my small brushes and just touched it. And that quick shine just went and sucked right in around that glass. And you could literally see it go all the way around to about here. And then I did it again and it went from here over a third time and then a fourth time across the bottom here. And there, so this glass is locked in tight. And I thought, man, that worked out nice for that. So when I went to put the glass on, I put Mod Podge in the three sections and got it to where it was fit the best on the body. I know there's this line in here, and I wish back when I was starting out that I would have sanded that smooth because I didn't realize the chrome fit so far forward. But I'm all right with it. I mean... It gives it a nice shadow line. But once that Mod Podge was dry, I did the same thing. I came in through the front and I got just a little tiny bit of that quick shine on the brush. And as soon as I touched it, it sucked it in and did this whole half, did it again, and it sucked it in and it did this whole half. And now this is locked in here real nice. Now I'm not going to force it because I didn't pin it, but... I don't have to worry about it just falling over someday. I've had that happen before. <laughs> but all in all, like I said, this is a great kit. I haven't done one with a moon tank on it, so I like that. The Ford logo is really sharp on this. It, it came on there real nice, and all of them, even the decals that I made, uh, went on <laughs> smooth as glass. So really super duper happy with this. I can't wait to get it sitting in next to the Texaco station with all the other roadsters. Um, just ready to roll. The battery compartment for this, I talked about doing magnets and I talked about doing this and that and the other thing. Gravity's letting it sit. It's not going anywhere. You see when I'm moving it, I put my thumb up against here, my finger. Because I set it up to where all you got to do, turn it over, give it a little tap, and it loosens up. I can pull that out. And while I'm doing that, the battery comes up with it. So I can reach in, grab that, pull it out, no problem. I left a boatload of wire in here. This thing will pull way out if I wanted it to. So all really, I didn't cut any of the wire. So whatever the LED wire was that came out, I left it. It was more than enough on off switch with these things, the CR2032. These batteries with the two LEDs will last about, I want to say, 15 hours um, if you leave them on all the time with a brand new battery. Um, but I, you know, I turn them off when I'm putting them away. And then I'll keep them, and someday I want to get to a show. I'm hoping there's one in Akron here soon, or somewhere around here where I can take one of these. Because I've I've never taken any of my, my cars to a show. I've never been to a show before. So I'd really like to get to one. But there we go with that. Again, my leather came out so dang nice. Uh, not overly shiny, not under shiny. Um, for once, I didn't overdo it. Once it got to where it was close, I left it alone. When it dried, it came out real nice. My uh, magazine came out real good. That's just printed on glossy paper on high setting or the best setting out of an HP printer. So, But you can see that just drops in. Give it a little push, and it goes back into place. And nobody is a wiser. If you never know that that thing was wired, 
you know? So it's really cool. And like I said, I got the wiring video just about finished. I'll try to get it out sometime, maybe early next week. So look for that one. And I think the next one we're gonna do is the Mustang that Bruce sent. So we're gonna get back into a little bit of hot rod work. But with this, I'll let you go. We'll start some, uh, start the pictures like I always do at the end of my videos and enjoy. Thank you very much for watching the kind words and everything and the comments. I love it. Y'all have a great day and a better tomorrow.